This is the There Is Another Way podcast from SpencerBruce.com. Making life work as a creative. Hello and welcome to the Creativity Kickstarter There Is Another Way podcast. I hope you are all doing remarkably well out there, particularly given the situation once again that the world sees itself in. It has been quite a while since I did my last podcast. In fact, it's been quite a while since I've really produced any art or any content of any significance. The main reason is that I was hit by an incredibly busy period of work, my content creation, the podcast, and many of the other things that I do. It also feels that I haven't really been able to fully live the There Is Another Way lifestyle for the the last um, probably six months. And there has been quite a lot going on, not just work as well. And as we know on this podcast, I like to be completely honest, you know, my head has been in some crazy places recently. And I feel that I've not been able to not only devote the time, but also devote the dedication that I want to towards the podcast because of my own personal headspace. And as a result of that, and because I respect the time it takes to listen to podcasts, I don't want to be wasting your time as well. I want to be providing you with good, succinct information that you can actually go out there and use and put into your practice rather than just content for content's sake. One thing that this enforced break from my own creativity meant that I had some time while in the car commuting to jobs or in the shower, you know, the usual places where you come up with ideas to really question everything. And I mean, literally everything. And I think that has also been another reason why I have held back from putting out a podcast, because as I mentioned previously, my head wasn't in the right space. I don't mean that in a negative way. I meant that in a creative way artistic way and that's been a a, a big part of where I feel that it is the right time to return now because I have regained the focus that I need for my art and also for the podcast but as a result of that I have a whole bunch of questions and I had a whole selection of questions that have been rummaging around my head over the last couple of months that you know really took me back to my my core and really shocked me in some regards because I started to question everything. What am I doing? What do I want? Where is where is my art going? Where is my creativity going? Which products should I carry on producing? Which content should I carry on producing? Should I drop things? And there was just more and more soul searching, which, if I'm honest with you, did lead to some dark places as well. And maybe that's uh, one of our burdens as a creative person we do maybe inhabit dark places from time to time and that can be good artistically as well but it can also sometimes really help you focus even though it doesn't seem it at the time because more and more questions arise when it came down to my products and the things that I do the content that I create I realized it just I'm just creating so much stuff I have to be totally honest and truthful with myself that it is far too much and as much as I believe in a lot of the, the projects that I do, some of them, you know, there's just not a time to do everything, at least not enough time to do everything well or as well that I, as I want to do them. As a result of this, I made a long list of projects and products that I am working on and content that I create and really went through and figured out, is this really important to me? Particularly as I'm getting older and time is more and more precious. I have a young daughter now and... Time is, you know, there's hardly any time to really do anything that isn't focused on the things that I need to do and supporting and nurturing her. As I'm sure you can appreciate, some of those things just had to go. And after going through the list, it became a bit of an easier decision because there were things that I really felt were important and things that I really enjoyed doing and things that I feel like I get a lot of positive response from and things which perhaps I don't get as much positivity from and also take a long time and the return on investment from them is very, very low. More importantly, and this goes back to topics that we've talked about in the past, aren't really authentic with who I am and what I do and what I believe in. And this was a core trigger, authenticity. I know I talked about authenticity in the past on the, the podcast and I kind of forgot about it. I kind of realized that in some regards, a lot of the things I'm doing were not authentic to me. 
And those were the things that really had to go. They just didn't sit well. I could do them. I forced myself to do them. But I think it shows. And I think maybe I'm the only one who's seeing that. But it definitely shows because when I am on it, so to speak, and I am fully authentically engaged, the feeling I get, I can see it and hear it in my output. And I also think that the viewer can or the listener can. Upon reflection, I I also realized that I got many, many things wrong. And that was important as well. It's like, I am here talking to you, trying to give you advice and help uh, for your creativity and your freelance business. And I stand up in front of students every week and try and give them advice. But I think it's also good to be able to say, you know what? I got I got some stuff wrong. I wasn't authentic. I tried things out and perhaps they didn't work as well as I thought they were going to work out. Or perhaps they didn't even work out at all. And I realised that I'd been caught in the trap. I feel that this is the capitalist neoliberal trip of always thinking what I create and what I do has to be thought of in terms of its financial value, its saleability, its marketability. And then I realised I've been following the wrong guidebook. And for a lot of time during the time that the podcast has been off the air, I kind of felt a bit like a fake because I started the podcast as a way of introducing and thinking about how we can think about living our lives another way. There is another way. And I think I maybe followed a lot of the ideas that people were putting out seven years ago when the podcast started about, you know, online earning and about making things work online and being able to create a living online solely online and solely for yourself but over the years that I've been doing it yes there have been peaks and troughs but I never would say that it it really took off and I think again it goes back to one the idea of authenticity but two it's it's a trap when we look at the things everyone is trying to sell us the way to make money online or make money as a freelancer but basically those are the people who are selling you the courses to make money. So they're making money from selling the, the, the courses and selling you the ideas when actually the reality of it is harder and harder. And then in 2022, I think it's just now completely irrelevant. Yes, there will be outliers who still make money from YouTube and make lots of money from YouTube. Yes, there will be outliers who can make certain business ideas work online. I'm not saying that isn't, but I think ultimately a lot of the advice um, about online is now dated or it's too late there's too many people in the game and it's time to think about something else and I feel a bit of a fake because of circumstance which meant that I had to now go back and take a part-time job because COVID happened and a lot of the work and a lot of the contracts and a lot of the performance I had dried up so my pots we've always talked about pots and I really strongly believe in pots because if I hadn't had various pots I would have been out of this game a long time ago but they all dried up and maybe they're slowly starting to come back. But I had to, again, look at myself and be honest and go, you know what? I'm going to have to take on some form of reliable work, particularly in the situation now, particularly coming out of COVID and with the energy crisis and all the other things that are going on, particularly in the UK, because I need some stability. I have a family and I have to take responsibility. If you want to turn off now and call me a hypocrite for all the things I said, You know, I believed in them at the time and I tried them at the time, but I don't think they work now. And this is part of being, this is part of evolving. You know, we all have to evolve. And I think I wouldn't give the same advice that I did maybe seven years ago for some of the ideas. A lot of the ideas, though, I strongly would. The idea of pots, really strongly, if you are being a freelancer, you've got to have these pots, different things. You can't put all your eggs in one basket, so to speak, until one basket becomes so big that it takes over. But I'd still argue that you'd want to have one or two baskets to to put things in to to keep things when the world is so uncertain and I think you know nothing has been highlighted more over the last two years and this may be the thing that led to me feeling you know in a in a dark place is that we are surrounded by total uncertainty now we've got war we've got the the pandemic we've got the the death of truth there is so much going on which makes us feel uncertain and having options is always going to be better than having one option or no options at all. One thing that will probably go on the podcast is me talking about freelancers and business because the title is Creativity Kickstarter 
And a lot of the time I feel that that's been sidelined a little bit. I know in the last series of episodes there were a lot of creativity exercises and I'm going to continue on them. I'm still going to support and promote my book, Creativity Kickstarter, 100 Exercises and Strategies to Kickstart Your Creativity. It's available on Amazon, so do go and check it out. I want to promote that more. That kind of fell by the wayside as well because of being busy and time. And it's like, I, you know, I put so much effort into that book. I put so much love into that book. And I strongly believe it can help a lot of people. So these were the kind of nubs, the nexuses of ideas that I had around that this is all going slightly wrong and I need to change tack. I realized, as I said, that I've been following the wrong guidebook and that it was time to get a grip. And that's the title of this episode, Time to Get a Grip. I really need to, to focus and really need to do what authentically feels right to me. And I strongly believe in terms, if you're still here because of the financial side of things, that that will lead to financial gain but it will not be immediate. These are slow burns. And again, I feel like I'm starting from scratch again in some regards. I'm going back to the beginning, repurposing things and starting with all the knowledge I've gained from the last 15 years of being a freelancer and and coming back with a little bit as a a safety net at the moment um, with my, my, my job which is it's tied to what I do. And it's I, I didn't take the job because it was a job. I took the job because it was a really exciting opportunity in an art school to teach amazing students about art and creativity, you know, what I'm here to do, which made me realize, of course, that I have a podcast, this one, it's about creativity, and I want to keep it going. So the podcast will be continuing. But as part of the idea of take get of getting a grip, I realized as well that at the end of the day, I'm an artist, but I'm not making any art. And what do I mean by that? I'm creating content, but I'm not making art. This is always going to be the fine balance because I can hear you screaming at me. But, you know, content is what makes money and art's just something you can do, which is a luxury. And to some extent, I agree with you. But this (laughs) brings me into the idea that we're we're stuck now. We're in this capitalist neoliberal trap of always thinking that whatever I create has to have value. No, this is the point. This is what's really struck me. And as you can probably hear, you know, this is where I've been in the last six months, going around this in the head. In a sense, it's like, what the fuck is wrong? We are being content creators rather than artists and storytellers. We're creating content for cash rather than for ideas. We are creating content for views rather than our expression, our authentic self, our viewpoint, our ideas. We, we, you know, what has art always been about? And again, I do know, you know, you can go back to the Renaissance musicians uh, who were, had patronage and would write for whatever. I know that to have value in art, you have to tailor it to what your audience want and if your audience are paying for it. But we are all doing that now. We are all trying to create content to go on to online services competing against everyone in the world who are uploading to the same places, doing the same things, following the same marketing strategies, following the same 10 things you must do to get your YouTube on video, putting out the same thumbnails, putting out the the same tunes, putting out the same films, putting out the same ideas. And that's the point. I'm not saying you shouldn't be creating content for patrons or your audience who like it. But it's time to rebel against some of these ideas. We are creating for income rather than the joy of creating and the the expression of creating. This is basically capitalist creation. Some of you may be switching off now. And again, I'm not having an argument about politics here. This is definitely what this is not about. But it's about the concept of what underlies capitalism is it's about the market and it's about the market forces and it's about providing for the market. I agree that. But there is another way. It's time maybe to create. And if you create something new, something fresh, something modern, something that's never been out there, if you don't follow the 10 steps of things you must do, there's a chance that people will start following you because everyone is oversaturated with the same content. And this is the scary thing. It's almost like we're living in an Orwellian society, although we are free because we are consuming the same content. We are consuming everything is looks the same thumbnails on youtube are pretty much the same everyone is writing the same 10 things you must do articles reviews but where is the art the art is becoming harder and harder to find 
the argument is now we don't really want to consume art. We're more interested in watching about how to use the tools, review the tools rather than actually using the tools. And part of that is because statistics dominate. We are we are chasing views, we are chasing ratings, we are chasing downloads, we are chasing likes. All of these are the metric by which we judge our art. Someone telling us how much they like it, going out and sharing it with someone and getting a true interaction. A like is meaningless. It really is. We've all done this, and this is no disrespect to everyone. We've all gone through Facebook and liked people's posts without even reading it. It's just, oh, he's posted something or they've posted something. I like that because they're, that's cool. I won't engage with it. I just click a button. What's also scary about this is given this is how the AI learns, then what hope is there for anything new in in our lives? Because the AI can only learn from our past. It can't learn. It can't predict the future. It can't tell us what we might be interested in because it doesn't know and we don't know. It's only learning based on what we have fed it. And all we are feeding it is things from the past. And it's a self-perpetuating catch-22 mechanism where it's just going to get more and more buried down so you're basically consuming the same piece of content you know that's how it will work there's no there's no chance with this of finding or stumbling across something brand new oh it's very very small the best way to stumble across things is if a friend recommends it to you the old-fashioned way and that can be done online and again this is not a rant about online it's a rant (laughs) about consuming content online and following things do you remember back in the day with the, the the beginning of the web, we all had our own web pages and some were really, you know, the colors were a bit strange, but that was people expressing themselves. You know, if we remember MySpace, it was a mismatch of weird things and red on black text and things, but that was someone making their artistic statement. So whenever you went to someone's page, you found out a bit more about them rather than the generic websites, the generic layouts, the branding that we're all susceptible to now that we are all trying to market when we are doing our promotional videos. Do something new. The, the, the books tell you, you know, put a piece of content out every day. No, fuck that. Do it when you want to do it. Do what you want to do. Create what you want to do. Express your own voice. And the more I feel, think about this, the more that I've realized that the podcast is an important thing. This is the mission of the podcast. It's creativity kickstarter. It's kickstarting your creativity to create the content, the authentic content that you want to create. What's going to happen going forward is the podcast is going to continue. I went through my list of things, as I said, and I decided I'm really passionate about the podcast. It doesn't get the best listening figures in the world, but that's fine because I know some of you who I'm talking to, and I hope that I'm inspiring you. And again, I hope I'm telling, inspiring you to tell your friends about this podcast and we'll spread the word that way. It'll be slow growth. It doesn't matter because that's not the reason I'm doing it. The reason why I'm doing it is I want to put ideas back into the world. I want you to explore your art without the bias of the, the 10 things you must do articles. Do what you want to do. Do something without thinking about, will this sell? Think about it, Buzz. Does this excite me? That's the change. Do I like what I am doing? Do I feel in a creative flow state when I am doing this? Is this something that I enjoy? And if you enjoy it, you've got one fan. And with the billions and billions of people on the planet, you will find another fan. If you like something, someone else there will like it too. So believe in yourself. Just don't try and create things just for likes. Try and break the AI. That's something I mean, I've, I've probably mentioned before, but I think we really need to consider. We should stop trying to create with a financial motive. We should start trying to create with a human narrative, storytelling. We need new stories. You know, film is is indicative of this right now. Film world is just the same things being rehashed. If we go back to the glory days of the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, there was so much there was a lot of dross and stuff that was unwatchable and bad, but we love that as well. There were just people trying to express themselves and tell their stories. Now that is closed down because it's all about financial gain. The mission now is to figure out the things you want to know, not the things you are told to know or the things in brackets you need to know. It's the things you want to know. Follow the things that you want to know and create the art that you want to create. Stop living in the hauntological past 
whether ghosts of the past haunt your future art. It's time to think about the future. And the Creativity Kickstarter podcast is back, and that is what I'm here to help you with. I'm going to, of course, be doing more Creativity Kickstarter exercises for you to do because I think they work quite well as a podcast, and that's some of the feedback that I've got. But also, I'm going to get on more guests as always because I love talking to guests. But this time, the focus is not going to be about their business. It's going to be about their creativity. That was a big thing going back for me and looking at it. It's like it talks so much about business, which is, you know, in some regards important. But I didn't really discuss their creativity, their output, and I need to change it. Remember I said earlier, I made some mistakes. I'm coming back to realize that I got some of these things wrong. I got caught in a trap and it's time now to put that right and move forward into the future. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you did, please do tell your friends. Pudis, give us a review on one of the podcast sites that you listen to because that does actually help uh, with the promotion a little bit. And also, if you want to check out the book, the book Creativity Kickstarter, 100 Strategies and Exercises to Kickstart Your Creativity is available from Amazon. There is a link below. So as always, the most important thing is take care, my friends, and I will catch you later.